Let's start with your committee's interview with Rona Graf. She has been at President Trump's side for many years when he was in the private sector. Were you or any other Democrat actually in that interview? It took place in New York, not in D.C. Was that a surprise to you? Well, I think it's indicative of what the Republicans are trying to do. They're trying to rush uh, to a close this investigation. Uh, I think twice this week they scheduled interviews out of state when we're in D.C. So it's very difficult for any member to be in more than one place at a time, particularly when their first mandate is to vote. So it's just one in, uh, indicative measure that they're doing that they want this investigation to go away. Did any Democrats that you know actually interviewed her? Who did? What kind of information do you think she'd be able to provide at this point in the investigation as well? Yeah, I, I believe one Democrat was able to go up to New York to do the, invest, the interview that took place yesterday. Uh, but there was another interview Wednesday uh, when we were, uh, another interview Wednesday when we were in D.C., and that interview was in New York. So, of course, no Democratic members were able to go. It's certainly suspect. What kind of information do you think that everyone's trying to get from her? Uh, I Look, I think what we're trying to get from the uh, people we interview is what took place when. Uh, clearly, a witness like her would have access uh, to the intertwinings of the uh, Trump campaign and what took place in Trump Tower before the president was uh, elected and uh, to the extent possible what took place after. We're not really uh, supposed to go into details of what's taken place in those interviews and obviously any interview that took place yesterday, uh, I don't think there was any other Democrats there but the, but the single one. All right. Well, equally as intriguing, FBI Deputy Director Andrew McCabe sat down for a total of 16 hours this week with your committee and the House Oversight Committee. You know, I know you can't tell us what was said, um, but there are reports that he corroborated uh, James Comey's statements in the past. Did you walk away feeling like the obstruction angle of this investigation has a little more credibility? I feel on a continuing basis uh, that there is increased evidence of obstruction taking place. Uh, my first uh, indication of that was when the President of the United States fired Comey, and in his own words, for that Russian thing. So uh, I think that's why the investigation can't be rushed. Uh, we're learning more and more. We started at the periphery, moving toward the center. You know, why are the Republicans rushing this through? Why are they trying to discredit why, uh, Mr. Um, Mueller? Uh, why are they doing any of these things? Because the investigation is getting too hot for them. It's entered the Oval Office. Uh, when General Flynn was indicted and pled, you know, that's a gateway into the Oval Office. It has them spooked. Uh, I think General Flynn was particularly important to them. And I think it's why uh, the president was so concerned about him that he told Mr. Comey to lay off that investigation. Uh, Comey indicated publicly that he felt instructed by the president not to move forward on the investigation with General Flynn. So I think that's why, quite frankly, the, the Republicans are, are a little freaked out about this. And I think Nancy Pelosi was absolutely correct. This is on the Speaker of the House. Yeah, he can shut down these rogue investigations that have nothing to do with Russia. He can make sure this investigation takes its course and that it's not rushed in the manner in which it is. I understand. They're not subpoenaing um, everyone that they should. They're not forcing answers from key witnesses. Uh, they're rushing this investigation. The, the interviews are taking place on an overlapping basis, often out of state. Uh, and they're refusing to bring in certain people who would be important witnesses. All right. Very concerning. I want to play what Democratic Senator Mark Warning, Warner, the top Democrat in the Senate Intel investigation, told CNBC's John Harwood this week. You've said in the past that on this issue of collusion, you've seen smoke, uh, but not fire. Uh, is that still the case? I think more and more of this picture is coming into view. I think some of the comments that I made literally months ago, I would amend those comments in terms of where we stand today. We've heard some uh, harsh words coming from Senator Warner. Uh, apart from that, do you feel the smoke is starting to clear? It appears you don't. I think the pieces are starting to fit together. I, I think last week was the first week I started to get some sense of what took place. But uh, our, I think Senator Warner's comments were measured to an extent, and I understand that. 
I want the American public to know we're doing this the right way. We're, this isn't a Benghazi-like investigation, but we can't be shut down and we be, can't be limited. Uh, months ago, if you had told me that the president's son would have been publicly acknowledging direct communications with WikiLeaks, that he would have said, if that's what it is, I love it, give us the dirt on Hillary Clinton. Look, I believe there was uh, attempts to obstruct. I believe there were attempts on both sides to uh, communicate and coordinate that effort. But we, we can't say that's the end of it. There's just so much more information. Uh, look at this. We, uh, the Mueller investigation subpoenaed the Deutsche Bank. That's extraordinarily important. I don't believe the House investigation has scratched the surface of the financial things that have taken place. I understand Manafort and Gates uh, were indicted for money laundering in countries like Cyprus, uh, an area where the Russians have uh, laundered money for years. Uh, that sort of cooperation and effort. We still don't know all the details. So I don't want anyone to think there's a rush to judgment. Do I think there was coordination? Absolutely. Okay, a lot of potential dangerous layers here. I have to ask you about Jill Stein. She's going to be on our show later today. The Senate Intel Committee investigating her for possible collusion with the Russians. Does this suggest anything to you that Putin's strategy for interfering in the U.S. election went beyond even the Trump campaign? And would the House Intel Committee want to interview her or members of her campaign? Uh, this is a witness I think would, be, uh, would make a lot of sense for the House to interview. Uh, it's just one example. I think there's probably still 30 or 40 witnesses that we should interview. This is just one. I don't want to say one is more important than the other, because quite honestly, you know, a month or so ago, no one knew who George Papadopoulos was or is. And now we're learning that what an important key figure he was in all of this and how this all began in April of 2016 when, when they reached out to him, when the Russians reached out to him and offered dirt and these emails that were released um, after the meeting in Trump Tower with Trump Jr. So it's, it's so enticing to jump to the, some other conclusions. There's, there's not just smoke here, there's, there's small fires, but they build to something that we need to understand. There's, this is such an important investigation. Let's, we haven't even gotten to the point where we've talked about the Russians successfully hacking into three dozen states and their boards of election and their attempts to actually impact the voting process. We have done very little to thwart that in the future. Uh, in Illinois, the primary election takes place in March. So we're months away from this, and we've done nothing to alter that and to thwart that in the future. So this is the most important investigation in our lifetime. Uh, it can't be thwarted. It's on the Speaker of the House uh, to make sure this goes forward so that the democratic process is protected.